our next guest is bringing us so much that we are going to have to really focus on what's going on here. Jamie Mason Cohn is a leadership development and resilience expert. He integrates his experience working at Saturday Night Live. Do I need to repeat that? Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. And as a Dale Carnegie Business Training Award recipient, recipient and a certified leadership coach, he just is the bomb. He brings it all to the corporations. He brings it to small groups. He works with individuals and he does a lot of this work amazingly through handwriting analysis, which I can't wait to hear more about that. But Jamie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Amy, for having me. Oh my gosh. It is such a pleasure to meet you. There are so many questions I want to ask you. So <laughs> many. What's your, what's been your background? Like, how did you get, how did you navigate between Saturday Night Live and business leadership? That's one of my first questions. Well, when I worked at Saturday Night Live, I worked for Lauren Michaels, the executive producer, and a brilliant group of, you know, senior leaders in corporate entertainment. So that ran the gamut of behind the scenes and production marketing. Uh, and I watched, I took notes. I was like a fly on the wall. I was very young, just out of college. And when I left there, I realized that there was so many applicable ways that I could bring to different groups, business groups, associations, people who are interested in personal development? Well, clearly, like from, from my understanding, your TEDx talk on leaderships had more than 2.2 2. 2 million views. That is incredible. That Thanks. Mo you know? Most of them were by my mom, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but not one person can keep clicking 2.2 2 million times. That is just amazing. I love it. So clearly you have some very important things to say that are resonating well with the business community. Thank you. And one of the things that we talked about early on, Jamie and I, was how to spot a leader in their handwriting. I just thought that that was a super and interesting and really unexpected place to start in terms of understanding more about people. But Jamie quickly set me straight and I thought it would be so much fun if he could take us through his process of how he works with his groups and everyone. Let's absolutely do it. That is so much fun. So Jamie, tell us, like, just give us a little brief overview about your process. Well, you know, Amy, the act of writing starts in the brain. It sends a signal down the nervous system to your hands mm -hmm. and your fingers that you write with carry out the directive of your brain. So your writing paints a picture of what you think. And so each stroke you're about to make on the page is directly correlated to a particular personality trait. And as a handwriting expert, I can see about a hundred personality traits and the, in an infinite number of patterns that exist that make you the unique person who you are. So okay. some people call it handwriting analysis, but it's really personality on paper. Oh my gosh. So wow. did you do one? I know I sent you in my sample. Did you do one for Lauren too? Well, I have one sample. Um, we can do the other one on the spot. I don't remember getting the other one, but here's what, here's what I think would be fun for the audience okay. is I think if the audience quickly, as we're talking, writes the following two sentences down that both of you were asked to do. Uh -huh. And what we're going to do is you who are watching this at home, I'm, I'm going to see what traits you might have in common with Lauren, with Amy, and with extraordinary thought leaders. So get out a pen and paper or a pencil and write, I told you and your purple people leader friend, take that silly monkey and go back to the darn zoo and then sign your name underneath. So if you usually print, because you may not write as much anymore as many people don't, that's okay, print. If you do cursive old school where you connect the letters, do that as well, because the more of a sample, the better. So this is just a snapshot of who you might be. This is not 100%, but it's highly accurate, it's fun, it's an instant personality assessment. And when you do this, you can also share this with family members because they might know, they might know you a little better or friends and share it with them and say, am I really like this? And we're gonna I do that as soon as you that. finish that. 
That yeah. is so awesome. So, um, so, so here's what, yeah. So let's, uh, which one you received and which one you didn't. I told you and your purple people eater friend, take that silly monkey and go back to the zoo. That's yeah. darn, zoo. darn zoo. And the reason that we use this, uh, these sentences, Amy, is because they show me a quick overview of many different traits through the different strokes. So I'm not even really looking at your letters. I'm looking at the stroke because in handwriting analysis speak, they say a stroke is a stroke wherever you find it. So we're looking at the strokes. We're looking at what lies beneath the surface and okay. handwriting can tell you. Okay. So if I share my screen, I have a feeling that mine was the one that didn't get there. Okay. Well, we can jump right to the writing. I have this sample. Okay. And then I have one that I can share on my screen. We can just, you can just do it in live. Okay. So, we'll, so okay. So we'll do it on the, on the fly here. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. So here are a few things we see now at home when you're watching this, I'm going to make this a little bigger so that you can see it as well. And that's as big as it can go. And I'm going to try to zero in on those partic partic particular traits and even see how Lauren, you and Amy, uh, might have some similarities as well. And I like to focus on strengths, right? Because I think when we focus on our strengths, the studies show that it can improve our leadership by 30% when we help build on what we're already good at. We're not going to ignore the blind spots, but that's what people really feel connected to. They feel empowered. They feel inspired. So here are a few things we see from this sample. Now let's look at the signature. The signature shows pressure in writing. Now, even though we're virtually thousands of miles from each other, I'm in Toronto, you're in California. What I'm seeing here is a certain amount of pressure on the page. Now, what that shows me, that's depth of emotions. This is an individual who feels deeply. So when someone tells this person something, Lauren, I believe that's your writing, and Lauren and I don't know each other well. You know, we, we know each other, we're getting to know each other, but we haven't really exchanged too many things about our lives. So this is what lies beneath the surface. So Lauren feels deeply. She has an aesthetic sense. She hears, she feels, she sees all her senses deeply. That's but the depth. So when she walks into a room, she sees things that others might not catch up on. She has this big picture view of how all these different things work together. She is accumulated of thinker. So like Thomas Edison has this trait, your mind works like building blocks. You like to piece together different components before you give your evaluation of the big picture. You're mm -hmm. what we call a BC thinker. So BC, if it was on a spectrum of different types of personality, feeling how you respond emotionally, you're a little bit to the right. So you have just enough sensitivity to feel what other people feel, but yet you make decisions from a rational place. So it's a good balance of sensitivity, yet you're easy going, you're easy, you're easy to work with, you're adaptable. You're like a palm tree that weathers the storm that people feel safe and secure around because ultimately you're a practical optimist. You believe constructively that something good will happen at the end of the day, but you're a realist that we're not going to sugarcoat it. We need to make the best rational, objective decision in the moment, but always with just the right amount of sensitivity and empathy. Dude, well, you just totally described that. her. You just what? got all that from that. <laughs> How in the world is that even possible? But you actually described her to a T. Like that is so, so interesting, Jamie. Wonderful. Okay, now let's see you do it live. Yep. <laughs> this is so crazy. Okay. So this is me. Okay. And if there's something glare, if there's like some big glaring weakness, I probably should know about it. So feel free. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. So again, these are, uh, I was called the personality x-ray machine for doing this in 10 seconds or less. Um, <laughs> this might take me if I did it one-on-one, -on -one, which I usually do groups, not one-on-one -on -one anymore. I usually would, might spend three hours to look at uh, uh, several pages. So this is literally a snapshot of yeah. a few things that stand out, some of your strengths. And you can, maybe we'll call it strengths overextended if you want, but I'm not going to call them weaknesses. So 
here are a few things that I see. You're a people's person. See the size of it? The size and shape is, you know, people, you walk into a room, Amy, and people just gravitate toward you. You're friendly, you're, you're nurturing, you're supportive. You see the garland shapes. Beyonce has these same shapes. It's the, it's the baseline. That's the imaginary line that cuts through or like a ruler. Imagine you have a ruler underneath. So, that, so, so you see your shapes combine both that friendliness, that warmth, but yet you also have this interesting balance, this really, um, I would say, organic, like holistic mind that is both sensitive and nurturing and, you know, kind. And, and these are not uh, uh, counter to each other. It's just they both exist. You're also analytical. You're also the mind like of an investigative journalist that that can go deep into a topic, can kind of get right to the point. There's no um, opening strokes on the T, on the first line, the A. That tends to me you're efficient thinker, your ability to get right to it, analytical, zero in on the key components. Ask a, a question that's not cutting, but that cuts right to the heart of the idea. Now, if we look at, uh, let's see, so those are a few things. Um, you also like... Lawrence, so this is some ways that you have something in common. You're, there, there's a sensitivity there. So there's a sensitivity of not just what you expect others to bring. I have this trait. I see this with Michael Jordan, with like, you know, artists as well. You have a sensitivity that you care how you come across, but you also are sensitive to how you come across to others to make sure that it's appropriate, that it's, that, that it's the, just the right balance of to the point, but yet sensitive to them as well. So that's similar. Now in handwriting, we also want to look if people are compatible. This can be in partnerships like you on a call, um, you know, in a professional setting. Uh, this could be in relationships. We want to look at the the actual uh, the stroke angle. So both of your strokes are just to the right. So that's one of the ways that we can know if people are compatible. If there's a similar angle in their handwriting, believe it or not, that's their emotions. No that's way. Yeah. So that's you have so similar. cool. Yeah. Well, you I, have hope I hope I am who you describe me to be. Like I'm like that person. Whoever that person is is pretty awesome. So, but thank you. Like I think that there is so like I mean Lauren can tell you if I actually am that way, but that is what I aspire to be. Like I want to be both analytical, be able to cut to the heart of the matter, and also be warm and kind. So hey, you're so there. Oh, thank you. you. Are. You're Love so sweet, there. but. It's, it's amazing to me that you can tell that from like, you know, the way, the way the T starts and this, the, uh, what do you call them? The circles like the, that Beyonce does. They're called garland shapes. Garland shapes. Yeah. It's, it, it looks almost like a wave, a slight wave at the bottom of that imaginary baseline in the middle zone. Those are your lowercase letters. Mm, interesting. And you see that, um, especially in silly in the third line. Uh, yeah. You see that um, in friend, uh, interestingly on the word friend, which sometimes words are associated with how we are in life, uh, not always, but there. So that's a friend who is nurturing, supportive and, and sensitive. That's all in the word friend, if you notice. Oh my gosh, I, this is incredible. So, so you, like when you bring this to the workplace, I mean, this is so, this is so personal. How do, you, how do you work with this? Well, I think there's there's two ways. Uh, one is I do it at the end of events. So I'll give a, a talk. It doesn't always have to be using handwriting as a framework or metaphor. And then at the end, I say, look, if you want to know a little bit about you, because it's not about the handwriting, it's about learning about yourself. Mm -hmm. And it, it prompts deep conversations, the deepest two minute conversations you've ever had, because people open up about overcoming illness, about challenges in their life. And they said, you know, I haven't told anybody about this, especially a stranger. And people don't want to leave because it, it, it kind of allows them this non-judgmental safe space that they can share. So I do a one-on-one -on -one at events with about two minutes per person. And people will line up for hours, like the, the you know, the on the surface, the most stoic financial advisors or, you know, bit heads of big pharma from the CEO to the person who just started as an intern, people want to learn about themselves. And they're skeptical at first sometimes, but when they start hearing things, both their strengths and maybe areas they could improve one-on-one, -on -one, they really get inspired to reflect on themselves. And I also will do it sometimes with groups where we look at eight traits in your handwriting and we compare them to people like Oprah Winfrey and Frida Kahlo and, you know, um, leaders that we admire across different environments. And we see that regardless of the culture or background or where you live, your handwriting 
is universal. The traits that are like Carl Jung said, who was a handwriting in, he loved handwriting and he actually- I didn't know that. Yes, Carl Jung was one of the early adapters of studying people's handwriting. And so Carl Jung talks about the collective unconscious, that we have those similarities between all of us, regardless of where we're from. Handwriting shows that. So people love in a group setting, knowing that you're also optimistic. That's interesting, even though it's an individual participation uh, activity. Wow, that is so interesting. So what are some things that we could do with this handwriting analysis? So let's say like Lauren and I, we already know we're compatible. That's, that's happy. <laughs> but like, what, what can I do? Like if I were having like some conflict with a colleague or something like that, could you use this as a springboard or like, how would you use it in the workplace? This kind of analysis? Well, one way, one way would be is that when it's done in front of other people. So I have a talk next week and they're asking me to do this for about 40 employees in a virtual setting. Mm -hmm. And they have the option of doing it about 95% choose to do it. And they will hear the strengths of employees that might be even across the country or in another, you know, uh, uh, across the hall, which they've never actually spoken to, especially during COVID. So the first way is when you hear about another person on your team, both their reinforced strengths and things you didn't know about them, it helps you connect with them. Mm. The other thing is you might not see eye to eye, Amy and Lauren, with every person you work with. I think you too might based on seeing the handwriting, but you know, when you see someone who just, you just can't connect with them. Maybe it's the energy. Maybe it's, you had a, a, an incident where it was, you know, it, it's still, there's some resentment brewing, but what this has done and people have told me afterwards is someone that they just didn't get along with, or they thought hated them. Mm -hmm. They ran into each other or they had a, some type of interaction afterwards and they talked about this and they mm -hmm. said, wasn't that interesting, the handwriting? And what did they say about you? What did they say about you? So it becomes an icebreaker for people to better understand each other and realize to not take things so personally, like I'm very sensitive, so it's hard for me not to, even to this day in my forties, yeah. but it makes me aware that, you know what? I might not see eye to eye with a lot of people, Joel Osteen said one out of four people, we might not see to eye to eye or might not like us. And we realize it's nothing personal. It's just some innate characteristics that we have that might make us see and be seen in a way that is not necessarily true, but other people might perceive it. So it cuts through bias. That's interesting. Because it's about the handwriting. It's not about anything else. I love that. Yeah, it, it gives it like a really safe space to be able to talk about certain people's strengths and get some insights that you may not have known before. And it's a, what a great way to like have a springboard for communication as well. See, you just did it right there. See, you're, see how you cut right to the point. You extricated the key de details of me going on a bit long and you said, this is what you're saying. So there you go. That's act <laughs> that is active listening, you know, mastery right there. Oh. <laughs> Yes. Oh, and hilarious. I imagine, Jamie, that this would also, I mean, there's no way that this level of self-discovery, especially when it happens in a corporate setting, right? That people want to know that they're doing the right job, that they're doing the best they can, that they're in the right seat on the bus, like Jim Collins said in Good to Great. But um, it would also, I think, trigger some other thoughts about rediscovery and especially now as things are reopening and people are coming back out and saying, gee, is this really what I'm supposed to do? Is this really everything I'm, I'm going to be or is there opportunity here? Do you get some of that reaction too? Yeah, yeah, just, just what you said, Lauren. Sometimes people will say, can you help me rediscover them? They'll use words like my purpose or, you know, my passion. And because handwriting is the latent possibilities that exist beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. So it's not always conscious to you if you, sometimes it helps having an objective, compassionate stranger who has uh, a process that is, is, seems, you know, irrational, but there's some real you know, truth to it when they hear it and it just lands in a different way. So people ask me all the time, can you help me find my purpose, my passion, or just what you said, can, can we look at some of my traits and see what these traits together might result in if I was to make a change? Mm -hmm. 
And so it helps to prompt that conversation. It doesn't end there, but it prompts when we start putting together the complex and paradoxical puzzle that makes you the extraordinary one of a kind person you are. And people sometimes want that and they like how fast it is because it's literally, I can do this in depth, but I can also do it with quite a degree of accuracy by in pulling those seconds. pieces. I literally could not believe yeah. and for all of our viewers, like this was not staged. Like the, yeah, that was the first time he had seen that and, and we had never met before. Yeah. So this is really exciting to see, like, this is really an amazing talent. When did you find out that you had this talent? Well, I mean, when I was uh, 12 years old, mm -hmm. I gave a presentation in school in eighth grade mm -hmm. and I was on stage and I froze. I couldn't get the words out. I was mm. devastated. A few kids laughed at me. I have kids now, so I, 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 would, I would cringe if that happened. I came home, I told my mother about it. So my mother was a, a full-time teacher, a principal, but she also was a handwriting analyst as a hobby. Mm. So I, I showed her my handwriting. She asked me to see it. She said, honey, let me see your handwriting. And she said, I see strokes. They look like figure eights, these fluent quick strokes. And mm. I had high T-bars. And she said, honey, one day you're going to strive to achieve these things. No, I was totally skeptical because I stuttered as a kid. I stuttered then, especially in front of other people when I was on stage. And I said, mom, are you telling me you can analyze my personality based on a few strokes on the page? That's, I totally don't believe that. Well, I didn't say all of that because my mom and my, she's my hero, but it planted a seed that I could grow and I could change. And from then on, I became fascinated with why I behave the way I do. And it became the ultimate icebreaker because like you said at the beginning, I work for Saturday Night Live and I found myself on the studio floor on the first day surrounded by writers, directors, comedians who found out this about me and they all wanted me to do what? To analyze their personality through their signature because everyone wants to know about themselves and how they can grow. That's what I found deep down. What an amazing experience and what an awesome story of like your personal journey too. It's so cool. Thanks. So and how can how can people get to know more? I there are about ten different companies I want to introduce you to. So, <laughs> so how do we get to know you more, and how we can engage your services? Well, thanks. Yeah. Uh, well, my website is my name jamiemasoncohen.com. dot com, and mm -hmm. there I have information on what we just discussed and more. Perfect. Jamie, thank you so much for coming to share with us. I had a feeling Amy might really get excited here. I'm so <laughs> excited about this. I'm just so jazzed right now. This is really <laughs> cool. And and the best business, like team building exercise I could think of. It's, uh, it awesome. is fabulous. Yeah. And I know our viewers are going to be looking for you too. So keep an eye on your Google Analytics. I have a pretty, <laughs> pretty good feeling about that. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Thanks, Laura. Thank Thanks, you so Amy. much, Jamie. Have a great day. And we'll be back.